Hi all, today we are going to learn about a new subject called Programming Paradigms. This is a subject which is introduced in the K2 syllabus for 7th semester Computer Science and Engineering discipline. So in this session we are going to learn what is the need of learning this particular subject in B.Tech curriculum and we will have a overview about the syllabus for this particular subject. So in this video we are going to learn about what is the need of learning this particular subject called programming paradigms in our B.Tech curriculum and we will have an overview about the K2 syllabus for programming paradigms. So first let's understand what is programming paradigms. Programming means the art of creating computer programs or it is the process of creating and executing instructions with the help of computer in order to make the human task more easier. Paradigms means the generic concepts or framework which is applied throughout the world. So programming paradigms means what are the generic concepts or frameworks which can be applied in all programming concepts. So in this subject we are going to learn about the generic concepts of programming languages. First let's understand why to learn this particular subject called programming paradigms. The first reason is it will enhance the capacity of the programmer to express their ideas. If a programmer is unaware about the various programming languages available all over the world, he cannot choose the right programming language to express the ideas. The programmer should be knowledgeable about all the features and specifications of various programming languages all over the world. So if a software program wants to do the programming process efficiently and effectively, he should be aware about all the programming concepts or paradigms that is available all over the world. The next advantage is improved background for choosing appropriate languages. Many of the professional programmers had their formal education in the past and the languages they have learned in their graduation level may not be used now. For example, if a programmer has learned only languages like C and Pascal in his graduation level, he may not be aware about the powerful features of Java, Python, etc. So whenever he is getting a project, he will always try to build or develop it using C or Pascal. So this is one of the main reasons for poor coding structure in various organizations. So in order to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of programming, a programmer has to update his knowledge level and skills in new programming paradigms and new programming languages. Next is increased ability to learn new languages. Computer programming is still an evolving discipline. Many design methodologies and programming strategies are modeled day by day. Every new languages have some special new programming constructs or features. So the continuous learning or updation regarding the various new programming constructs and paradigms is very essential for a successful programmer. Next is better understanding about the significance of implementations. In many cases, an understanding of implementation issues leads to an understanding of why languages are designed in the way they are. For example, if a programmer doesn't know why the array index is starting from zero or why all the standard programming languages are implemented array in such a way that its index is starting from zero, then he cannot use the concepts of pointer and arrays in an efficient and effective way. So the programmers should understand why the languages or the features are implemented in the way they are seen. Next is better use of languages that are already known. Many programmers are unaware about all the features of the language that they are already aware of. For example, we have learned C, Python, etc. in our graduation level, but we are not at all aware about all the features of Python or C programming. Because of this unawareness, we may not be able to code a particular idea in an efficient or effective manner. So learning the various standard generic programming paradigms may help the programmer to utilize all the available features of a programming languages 
that are already known to them the next reason to learn programming paradigms is the overall advancement of computing there is a misconception among various programmers like the most commonly used programming language is the best programming language available to solve a particular problem but this may not be right always there will be many other programming languages available in the world to solve this similar sort of problems in a efficient and effective manner ultimately a good programmer should use the resources in a economical and efficient manner in this case the programmer have to aware about what are the various other standard programming languages that can be applied to solve the particular problem learning programming paradigms can enhance this sort of knowledge level of the programmer to understand the features and functionalities of various programming languages available all over the world so these all are the reasons to learn programming paradigms next we will have an overview about the ktu syllabus for programming paradigms as we all know that the ktu syllabus has six modules in the first module of this subject we will learn about how to name a variable function etc and what are the scope of a variable how the binding is done what are the various theorem management techniques available in various programming languages and we will learn about the typical control flow mechanisms like sequencing selection iteration recursion etc in module 2 we will learn about the standard data types available in various languages like arrays strings sets pointers list files etc and we will also learn about how to perform type conversion type checking type question equality testing and how we will do a assignment operation in various languages in module 3 we will learn about subroutines or functions or function calls how a function call is performed in the back end using static and dynamic links what are the coding sequences how to pass parameters using call by value call by reference call by name etc and we will learn about generic subroutines coroutines exception handling mechanisms etc in module 4 we will learn about functional languages lambda calculus is the concept used in functional languages we will have an overview about scheme language and we will also learn about strict and lazy evaluation higher order function execution etc and also we will learn about a logic programming concept and we will learn this concept with the help of a language called prolog in module 5 we will learn the basic object oriented concept and how these concepts are implemented in the back end we will learn about encapsulation inheritance constructor destructor polymorphism dynamic method binding etc and we will also learn about the features of scripting languages like php python etc in the last module we will learn about how the concurrency and synchronization is achieved in various languages using threads concept and we will learn about the runtime program management environment like virtual machines late binding how the debugging and performance analysis performed in various languages etc so this is the overview of our subject so in this semester we are going to learn about all these concepts in generic about various programming languages thank you